Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Happy Wednesday, everybody. It's Wednesday. We're in the house of the Lord. It is so good to be with you. Anybody ever uh, used GPS on your phone? Use the map app to go somewhere just by a show of hands. Okay, now they have this thing where if you're going somewhere and you get rerouted, it actually gives you an option to reroute. Or if your main route is not there, it gives you an alternate route. Okay. Um, we had one of the original GPSs, and one time we were in St. Louis for a thing, and I, I was in a wedding, so Kristen was like, I'm gonna go run errands, go shopping or whatever. And the highway was completely shut down. They had torn out the highway, there was no highway. And she got stuck somewhere, and she kept, it, it kept rerouting, it, it said recalculating, and tried to put her on the highway, so she turned around, and there was no highway. And it said recalculating, and it put her on the highway, but there was no highway, so it, she said she just had to pull up and pray and then wait for me to get out of the thing so she could call, she could call me because she was lost and she didn't know what to do. Anybody ever been lost before? Okay, so I was thinking about this today. Everybody that is here right now is meant to be here right now. As we're standing, we're going to open service, but you are here for a reason. Nobody accidentally got here today, and I, I know in faith God told me you're here for a reason. Everybody that's here for a reason. God has given pastor a word. I have faith that God has given pastor a word for you, for everybody in this house. So as we have this service tonight, let's just thank God that he never loses us. He never loses track of us. If we have uh, something in our way, a detour, God put that detour for us to learn something or avoid something. So I'm just grateful for that. Let's pray for this service. Lord Jesus, we thank you, God, for everything you've done. We thank you, Lord, for loving us, for caring for us, God, for seeing us. God, for ordering our steps, Lord. We trust you tonight. We believe you, God, that, that you are here with us and that you have something for us tonight, God. But we're here for you. We're here to lift you up. We're here to worship you, honor you in spirit and in truth, God. We pray, Lord, that you would touch every part of the service, touch the singers and musicians and the word tonight. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Same old road for miles and miles. If you've been hearing the same old voice, tell the same old lie. If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you've got pain. You're in 
Somebody shout hallelujah. He's a great God. All power in heaven and earth belongs to that name. The name above every name. Hallelujah. Amen. While we're standing, we're going to go before the Lord. In that great and mighty name. Amen. Let's remember Brother Lou and Sister Connie Perez. Healing strength in their bodies. Amen. Sister... Uh, Brother Joe Collins, his sister, Teresa, she gotten out of surgery and everything went good. And we prayed for her Sunday. So just glorify God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I, and I'd like to thank the Lord for his hand of protection in my life. He does a, he does a great work. Amen. He does many great things. I, could have been in a bad accident this week and uh, 75 miles an hour on a highway and your hood comes up and blocks you and smashes the whole front of your windshield and got glass going everywhere you know I'm not making light of it but when you're going that fast and you cannot see it's a pretty dangerous thing and uh there were cars going <laughs> in every direction all around me as I was trying to find the shoulder of the road. But um, the Lord had his hand upon me, and he protected me. I'd like to thank him for being a great and mighty God. I never want to take that for granted. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a protector, he's a healer, and he's a way maker. Amen. And we're going to go before that name. If you have a need, by an upraised hand. And amen. We're going to open up the front. We invite you to come. and We'll pray with you. We'll pray with your need that God would do a work in your life. Amen. Please come as we go before him in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you once again, God, to be in your house, to praise you, to lift up your great and mighty name. God, we pray, Lord, over Brother Lou and Sister Connie. God, that your healing strength would be upon their lives, Lord. God, and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your hand of protection, Lord. We thank you for being a healer and a way maker. God, and I give you praise and glory for it. God, meet every need that's in this house. Reach forward and be a great healer and a way maker. We thank you in your precious, mighty name. In Jesus' name, amen. Surrender. This is my surrender. 
hand clap of praise right now. Hallelujah. So worthy of our praise. What a what an awesome spirit we already feel tonight. I have no doubt we have a, a great message coming from our pastor, our anointed pastor who's rooted in the Bible, rooted in the truth, and he's going to continue to to preach the message that the Lord gives him and I'm thankful for that. Thankful for you guys being here tonight. We're going to have the ushers come forward to receive the Wednesday night tithe and offering. And, you know, he's, God is good, isn't he? Amen. All the time. That's right, Pastor. He's good all the time. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you, Jesus. We thank you for this opportunity to be in your church, Lord. We thank you for the blessings that are already upon this church and the anointing that we feel in this church, Jesus. Let your hand continue to strengthen us and encourage us, Jesus. And guide us down the path to reach this world, Lord, and we pray that this offering and tithing goes forward for its intended use, Jesus, to grow your kingdom, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun is shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering, though there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. Heart will choose to say, Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. No other name I know. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. It feels good in the house of the Lord tonight. God's wanting to move. God's wanting to bless. God's wanting to help. God's wanting to speak to us. We can't take one service off. We, we can't afford to take one service off. Because I promise you the devil is not taking a service off. The devil doesn't care if it's Wednesday night. The devil doesn't care. Amen. So I want to give it everything I've got. I want to give it everything I've got. Praise God. Jesus' name. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Let's go to the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 13. I want to get right into it. God has given me a word for tonight. I'm excited to preach this. Somebody preach with me tonight. Does anybody believe God could fill somebody with the Holy Ghost tonight? Amen. Amen. Thank God for filling Chris with the Holy Ghost on Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Got a certificate with his name on it. Going to give it to him on Sunday. Amen. I thank God for what he's doing. Exodus chapter 13, verses 17 and 18. God has given me a specific word. And it's been confirmed with the songs we've sung and with what Brother Scott said before service. God knows what he's doing. Amen. Then it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go. So everybody say, let it, they let them go. That, that God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. That was easy. That made sense. 
But God didn't lead them that way. For God said, lest perhaps, Brother Scott, he rerouted them. Lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. So God led the people. Everybody say, so God led the people. So God led the people. That's right. God led the people. That's what's important. Is that he's leading us. God led the people around. Sometimes we have to go around. By way of the wilderness of the Red Sea and the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. I want to preach to us on this Wednesday night to every heart that's under the sound of my voice. God knows the best way home. God knows the best way home. Come on, put your hands in the air. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your word, God. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your power and your anointing, God. Thank you for leading us, God. Help us, Lord. Help us, God, to allow you to lead us in the ways that you would have us to go. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. Come on, say, in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I want to get into this. I... Just a moment tonight, I, I want to step into the middle of the grand drama of redemption as it plays out in the book of Exodus, the Exodus story. After 400 years of captivity, God has heard the cry of Israel. And in the fullness of his time, he has sent forth a deliverer named Moses. There are a lot of interesting characters in this drama, and if we aren't careful, we might arrive at the conclusion that Moses is the main character. But that would be a mistake because the main character in this uh, story is God. He's the redeemer. He is the deliverer. Somebody say amen. amen. He's the one who makes a way where there seems to be no way. He's the one who hears Israel's cry. And he's the one who hardens Pharaoh's heart. He's the one who has prepared Moses in the wilderness. And he is the one who breaks the yoke of Egypt and brings his own people out from among them. God is not merely a character in this story. He is the author and the finisher of it. And it's God who leads them out of Egypt. You've got to be careful to keep that perspective right. My story, your story, is in His hands. He's the author and He's the one that's directing our feet. God knows the best way home. Because for the Philist, uh, sorry, for the Israelites, home was to the north, but God took them south. There was a road to the Canaan land from Egypt called the Coastal Highway, but God led them instead into the wilderness. Isn't that how He is sometimes? Amen. There's a highway. They have a name. For the highway. The highway would be faster. And God says, let's go to the wilderness. All right, Lord. The highway was shorter. That way was simpler. But it passed the land of the Philistines. That would have been the most direct route. Looking at it from Israel's point of view, that would have seemed like the easiest way to go. We say, Jesus, take the will. Jesus is not my will, but thine be done. But the whole time he's telling us to go one way, we see the highway and we're like, well. And Jesus said, well, but I, I told you to go that way. I, if, if I'm really going to lead and if you're really going to trust in the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding, then get your hands off of the wheel and let God lead the way because I've come to tell you on this Wednesday night, God knows the best way home. It might not make sense on paper. It might not make sense on the, on the Rand McNally Atlas. It, it, it might not make sense. But if God said it, let's go that way. He knows the best way home. And so listen closely, as God directs your path and orders your steps, sometimes He's going to make you take the long way home. But just because it's the long way does not mean it's the wrong way. 
Lord, you are the way, the truth, and the life. He's the way. He knows the steps that I take. He knows the end from the beginning. Why do we try to take control? Why do we say, well, the highway would have been a lot better. It would have been a lot simpler. My ministry would have flourished if, God, you would have just took me that way. And God said, let me take you to a wilderness and teach you some things. That way, when you get behind the pulpit, you'll know how to preach it with conviction. Some of you are back home. It wasn't the easiest way. It wasn't the fastest way. It wasn't the coastal highway, but your babies are in Sunday school. There were some lessons that we learned away along the way, and God said, just let me lead you and guide you. I know the best way home. Amen. Your way is better. Your way is better you all sang it your way is better take off the run and sing your way is better and God said well then go that way like take your hands off stop trying to direct stop trying to order your own steps and let me order your step let me direct your path. Let me lead you in the paths of righteousness for my name's sake. Let me lead. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. God could see what they could now see. He looked that way, the coastal highway, the way that is better, the way that is broad, the way that everybody else is going. He looked that way. And he saw a war, a war that they were not prepared for. He looked that way and saw a battle that would cause them to lose hope. And it was the grace of God, the provision of God that made them take the long way home. That's important because the way he takes them and the way he takes us will also challenge our faith. There's going to be some more prayers prayed. There's going to be a longer fasting. There's going to be, you're going to be in the word a little bit more. But when you come out, you're going to be proven. And so you can trust him. I'm not saying God will take you the easy way. I'm saying God will take you the right way. Stop fighting it. Just let him lead. I wish I could say that as a, as a preacher, as a, as a man of faith, that this whole thing has been easy for me. It hasn't. It hasn't. And I don't have time to tell. But, but we, we, we think we know and we think we've got it all. And, and, and well, Lord, this is just, this is how it, it happened for so and so. And then we just think that's going to, and God said, no, look, I know the best way home. Job 23, 10. But he knows the way that I take. And when he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. He knows the way. Everybody say, he knows the way. He knows the way. Job was struggling with the fact that he couldn't understand the way that God was taking him. Sometimes we've got to have all the details. Well, Lord, I need to know every pit stop. I need to know every trial. I want to know every situation. I want to know everything that comes up. And sometimes God says, if I showed you that, you would stop walking. If I showed you every pitfall and every snare and everything that the enemy has for you, you would totally give up. Nobody signs up for that. But when you get through it and you get on the other side and you, you look back beyond and you look back over the Red Sea, you thank God for every trial and you thank God for every prayer meeting and you thank God for every time he got a hold of your heart because that's where we grow and that's where we learn and that's where we mature and that's where we develop our Christian walk. And when we get on the other side, we say, you know what? There's been a lot of bumps and there's been a lot of bruises and there's been a lot of lessons and there's been a lot of scars, but I wouldn't trade anything for it. Thank God for every scar. Thank God for every lesson. Thank God for every, every, every moment along the way. Job was struggling. As a matter of fact, he couldn't see God in it at all. Forward, backward, left, right, everywhere he looked, he could not find God in a circumstance. But he takes consolation from two things. First, he knows the way that I take. 
I thank God that we serve a God who knows. Every now and then in your prayer, every now and in your praise, just say, God, I thank you for knowing. Thank you for being a God who knows. And he has not forgotten me or abandoned me. And when he has tested me, I shall come forth. We, we, we like to get to the gold part. I shall come forth as gold. We ought, to re, we ought to focus on the part that we're going to come forth. That we're getting out of this. He knows the way that I take, number one. And secondly, I'm coming out. I'm coming forth. Gold is a byproduct. I'm coming out of this mess. God knows the best way home. You may not understand why we're taking the long way home. But this I know, if the Lord directs my path, this road will bring me home. It may be broken, it may be difficult, it's going to have its challenges, but this road will take me right where he wants me to be. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, God knows the best way home. Not only does God know which way is best, not only, notice this, if you're taking notes, write this down. Not only does God know which way is best, but he walks the way with us. He doesn't just point and say, just go that way. He says, let's go this way. Amen. Exodus 13, 21 and 22. And the Lord went before them. So he, he, not, he, he doesn't just tell them. He goes, he went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so as to go by day and night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people. They may have been on the long road, but there was a miraculous presence of God that went on the journey with them. You're not alone in this thing. By day the Lord was a cloud over them, sheltering them from the storm, uh, sheltering them from the sun. And when the sun went down, he was a pillar of fire before them, warming them in the coolness of the night. That means no matter where you're at, no matter the elements, no matter the circumstance, day or night, God is with you. He never took his presence away. God has not forgotten you. Now the enemy, I hate the devil. I want want to take every opportunity that I have to let him know I hate him. I hate the devil. He's going to come along and say, God's forgotten you. He has abandoned you. Now, the devil knows scripture, and he knows that that he said he'll never leave you or forsake you, but the devil's going to make you feel like you're going to be the first case. Oh, you're number one. He's going to leave you. No, he's not going to leave you. He's not going to abandon you. He's on this journey with you. The road may not be easy, but your helper is walking with you. The way may prove difficult. It will prove difficult, but your provider... When you're walking with the way maker, he's walking beside you. Exodus 14, 1 and 2. Now the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they turn and camp before Pihahirot, between Migdol and the sea, opposite baal Safon. You shall camp before it by the sea. Pihahirot. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. But I wrote it out. I tried to write out a pronunciation because I, Pihahara, I don't know. I wrote Pihahi wrote, and Migdo, and Belsaphon. Sometimes it sounds like places that you don't want to go. Migdo, Pihahi, Belsaphon. Where are you taking us? Lord, sometimes it sounds like commitment. Sometimes it sounds like discipline. Sometimes it sounds like places that we wouldn't just accidentally go. But God says, I've got every step ordered. It sounds like words and places that you can't even pronounce. But if you'll just trust me, I'm leading you every step of the way. I know the way that you take. You don't have to be able to pronounce it. You just have to be able to follow I feel the Holy Ghost in this house today. 
Not only does God send them the long way home, He tells Moses, Brother Scott, to take a detour into an unlikely place. Rerouting. They were already well on their way to freedom, but God said, let's wait right here. Now, this is God, because we wouldn't, brother, we, this, this, we wouldn't sit around the conference table and, and make these plans. God said, I know you're, you're well on your way to freedom, but let's wait right here and let the enemy catch up. Okay, well, there's an idea, but let's hear some other. God had a good idea. Let's, let's hang out. We're, we're, y'all going a little too fast. Let the enemy catch up. The precise location is uncertain. The sea, of course, is the Red Sea. Migdol means tower, which probably refers to a fort of some sort in this, in this part of the country. That would be one of, <clears throat> one of Egypt's forts. Most likely... Piha, he wrote, was an opening in Egypt's canal system. I had to look this up, opening into the Red Sea. While Bel Safon may have been a reference to a place of worship. God, what? Can we just go home? Naaman said, you want me to go dip in the Jordan River seven times? Paha, he wrote. What are you, what? That would not, it, it would just be a lot easier, Lord. If you, if you would just touch me and say, be healed. I don't, the Jordan River is the nastiest, dirtiest river. You want me to go dip seven times? Naaman in the Bible said no. Look it up. And his servants, who he surround himself with, said Naaman, Maybe you ought to listen to the man of God. It's important, side note, who you surround yourself with. Maybe you need some people that, that when you have a weak moment that can say, hey, you know what? I, maybe you ought to listen to your pastor. Maybe you ought to listen to your youth pastor. Maybe, just maybe, you ought to listen to God and let him take you to the Jordan River because when you come up... I, Naaman had leprosy. When you come up on that seventh time, your skin's going to be like a baby. But the coastal highway's right there. It would be a lot easier. Yeah, Naaman, but you're going to learn some things through obedience. Yeah. So where were these places? Migdo, Pelhiro, Belsafon. That doesn't really tell us much without an ancient map. We'd be hard-pressed to find the exact place, but that's not the point. The point is wherever they were, the Israelites were completely vulnerable. They were out on Egypt's frontier, surrounded by desert, with their backs to the sea, and God led them there. There's a coastal highway. Get home quickly. And you're taking us the long way home, and now... Our backs are to the Red Sea. The enemy's coming. We're in places we can't pronounce. What are you doing? I know the best way home. Watch. They had no defenses. That was exactly where God wanted them. Let me tell you, if you're feeling a little helpless, I have a word from the Lord. He has you right where he wants you. Exodus 14, 3 and 4. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are bewildered by the land. The wilderness has them closed in. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that he will pursue them. And I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. My God, I wish I could adapt that for the theme of our church every time God told you something and they did so. God told them to go pray for somebody and they did so. God told them to fast and they did so. God told them to start a ministry and they did so. 
That's four powerful words right there. If, God, if we would just do what God tells us to, it'd be a lot less struggle, a lot less stress, and a lot, a lot less uh, steering the vehicle, and a lot more just riding and saying, God, wherever you take me, I'm going to trust you. It might not make sense on paper. It might not make, I, the, the coastal highway is right there, God, but you know what? You knew that. So I'm going to just, let's go to the wilderness. Is this all right tonight? Amen. Let me tell you what God is doing in your life. It's the same thing that he was doing with Job and the same thing that he was doing with Israel. God is putting you in a place where his name will be glorified. Because this story is not about you. Amen. And it's not about me. But when the Red Sea is parted, that wasn't Moses. That was God. And when God brings you through your situation and your wilderness, when you let go of the will and you let God lead you and God, and, and, and God performs a miracle, His name is going to be glorified. And that's what He wants. No flesh shall glory in His presence. He's a jealous God. He wants all the credit, and he deserves all the credit. Amen. So God was setting the stage so that he could show both the Israelites and the Egyptians that he was Lord and that victory belonged to him alone. Come on, let me tell you, God will get glory through all of this. And so this is where the story takes a wrong turn. The armies of Egypt appear on the horizon. The Israelites realize that they were in a dangerous and desperate situation, trapped between Pharaoh and the Red Sea. Hmm? Hmm. We call it a rock and a hard place. The Israelites start getting nervous. And instead of looking to God for deliverance, Somehow they managed to ignore the pillar of cloud that stood before them and instead became captivated by their enemy. Exodus 14.10 And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Their fear overwhelmed their faith. They cried out to the Lord. But this is not the cry of faith. Instead, it's a cry of desperation, a fearful cry that will earn the rebuke of the Lord. In verse 15, And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. It's always the will of God in any situation, in any circumstance. Just keep walking. Just keep going forward. I, I know there's a Red Sea. Just keep walking. What makes this so disappointing is that they had witnessed God's wonders as he brought them out of Egypt. The Bible says, the scripture says they marched out of Egypt in verse 8 of chapter 14 with a high hand. That means they walked out boldly. Sometimes we walk out of Sunday service boldly with a high hand. I have seen the glory of the Lord. I saw God fill Chris with the Holy Ghost. And we walk out shouting and singing. And then Monday slaps us in the face. And we say, I don't even know if I believe there's a God. You're an Israelite. We've all done it. At the very first sign of danger, now they've panicked. This may have been the long way home, but God was right there with them. He directed their footsteps to this very place. Let me tell you, you are right where God wants you to be. Stop listening to the enemy. Stop giving in to doubt and fear and feeling overwhelmed and saying, God, I don't know why. I wouldn't have rode it up this way. I wouldn't have went through all these places. I wouldn't have done this, God. But this is not about my plan. This is your way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Woo! Psalm 91, verses 1 through 6. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the 
a perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. The short version of the story is this. God brought them through. The Lord told Moses, lift up your rod. God will use what you have. God, God is God all by himself. If we were writing this story, this is not how we would have written it. But God says, what do you got in your hand? Lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. As Moses did this, the presence of the Lord, which had been before them, always leading the way, now moved behind them, between them and their enemy. Listen to me. He doesn't just go before you. He follows up after you. His angels, the Bible say, encamp round about you. And watch what happens in Exodus 14, 20. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Thus, it was a cloud and darkness to the one, and it gave light by night to the other, so that the one did not come near the other all that night. God parted the water, and the children of Israel went across on dry ground. And as they moved forward, the cloud moved with them. So the Egyptians pursued them from a safe distance, separated by the presence of God. God is able to hold your enemy at a safe distance. When morning came, the Israelites had passed through the Red Sea, but the Egyptians were still in the midst of the sea between those two great walls of water. And notice something. We skip over a lot of stuff when we read these stories. We don't, we don't, you got to stop. Deliverance came at night. God can still deliver you in your darkest hour. Darkness cannot hide you. From his help. And when morning came, Pharaoh with all of his horsemen and chariots was still crossing the Red Sea. Verse 24, now it came to pass in the morning watch that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud and he troubled the army of the Egyptians and he took off their chariot wheels so that they drove them with difficulty and the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Now, Egypt realizes what Israel should have known from the first. The enemy realized what the children should have realized. The Lord is fighting for us. <laughs> you need to stop and remember who fights your battles. Verse 26, Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, on their chariots, and on their horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth, while the Egyptians were fleeing into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen, and all of the army of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. Not so much as one of them remained. But the children of Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. So the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. And he said, I know the best way home. <laughs> it's through the Red Sea on dry land. I know it doesn't add up. I know it doesn't make sense. Just watch me work. As the music comes. And then Moses, verse 1 of chapter 15, then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord. I've talked about this before. There's going to be some singing. When we come out of this, there's going to be some rejoicing when all of this is over. 
The old song says, won't that be a hallelujah meeting when we step on the other side? We're going to stand on the other side. We're going to shout. We're going to sing. We're going to dance. We're going to leap. We're going to play. But how much different would have been if they would have sung their song of victory before they passed through the Red Sea? I think this is a fundamental flaw of Israel. Anybody can pray Him after deliverance has come. Anybody can praise Him after He has made a way out of no way. Anybody can praise Him after He has revealed His plan and purpose. But the question that we need to answer is, can you praise Him right now? Right song, wrong side. Can you praise Him before He bears the right arm of power? Can you praise Him before the healing comes? Can you praise Him before your prodigal walks through the back door? Can you praise Him before the enemy is defeated? The Red Sea didn't change anything about our God. He was just as mighty to save on one side as He was on the other side. There's nothing wrong with their song. I'm glad they praised God for what He had done. It was the right song to sing. They just sung it on the wrong side. Don't wait until we get everything together to rejoice. You can enter into his gates with thanksgiving and praise, not having all your ducks in a row and not having every blessing and not, and, and not having the report that you want. But you can say, Lord, I'm just going to worship you in advance because I know you know the way that I take. And when I get through this, when I do come forth, I'm going to come forth as gold. So I'm just going to trust you throughout the process. Let's all stand. God's leading you. And God's directing you. And there's going to be some places that He takes you that you're not going to understand right away. Why? Why am I here, God? Paul and Silas. And all we've done is preach, brother. We've tag teamed all these years. Why are we in jail? And they could have just went in the mully grubs and just cursed God and just said, you know what, it wasn't worth it, God. This this is what we get for being in Sunday school all our life. God bless God. See if I ever walk through those doors. See if I ever do. And God said, let me show you something. Let me teach you a lesson in the middle of your jail cell that if you'll just find a way to worship And the Bible says they sang praises. They prayed and sang praises. And all of a sudden, revival. All of a sudden, the prison started shaking. And the doors came open. I don't know where you're at. But God does. I don't know what the diagnosis is exactly. But God does. I don't know why you've had to go through this season in your life. But God does. And God's saying, I know the best way home. I know there's a coastal highway. I know we could just, I know I could just snap my finger and you'd be healed. I know that. But let me teach you some things along the way. That when you do get back home, you'll be able to teach your children and your grandchildren. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. And He's a God that will save you. Because let me tell you, child, let me tell you, grandchild, there was a time that we were up against the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army was chasing us. And God delivered us. And now you have a testimony that you can share to your children and your grandchildren. And all of a sudden, they see the salvation of the Lord. And they say, you know what? I want that. It's not always going to make sense. If we could choose, 
we would choose the coastal highway. I like highways. Six lanes. I just want to get in a fast one and just go. We don't learn anything there. That says, also, if we go that way, we might go through a place that's going to be very discouraging to your ministry. Hmm. I know it looks easy. I know it looks good on paper. But when you go out there, your ministry might die. And then your family gets lost. And your children and your grandchildren for generations to come because of the coastal highway. Let me lead you around. Holy Ghost is in the house right now. These altars are open if you want to find a place to pray in your pew. I would just thank God for where he's got you. I would thank God for where he's leading you. And I would, in your prayer tonight, I would say, God, I want you in control. I'm tired of trying to steer this. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm tired of trying to force it, God. But I want your will to be done. Come on, your family's at stake here. Your children are at stake here. Come on, don't just take the easy road. Don't just take the coastal highway because it just makes sense on paper. But say, God, where do you want me to go? You know the best way home. Come on, let them lead you tonight. Come on, let them lead you tonight. Somebody make up your mind as we sing.
not make sense to me. <laughs> you know the way that I take. You've been leading me all this time, God. I didn't even realize it. It didn't make sense, but now as I look back, that makes a lot of sense. And you're right, God. That was the best way home. Thank you for leading me. Some of you made your way back home. Thank God for that. And there are more that are coming. But let God lead them. Let God. And that's hard. Because we want to force and we want to make. And we think this is the way. We, well, well, here's the coastal highway. Just go this way. No. There are some lessons that they're learning as they're making their way back home. Mm. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God knows the best way home. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> By way of announcements, the Oasis group, immediately following service tonight, there will be a meeting for everyone going on the Oasis cruise. It's some information that the cruise line shared with the toad mines that can save some money and be helpful. So if you want to go, they're meeting tonight. Where at? Is there a certain spot? Meeting in the conference room over here. 
Next Sunday, immediately following service, the Oasis group will be having, that's this Sunday, we'll be having a dessert auction. Lots of, we know there's a lots of good cooks in this group. You won't want to miss it. To our ladies, if you've registered for the ladies, uh, the Indiana Ladies Conference, please let my wife know. This is important. We need an exact number in attendance for seating to organize the group for the itinerary while there. If you want to be included in these, you must let Sister McFarland know that you are attending. Registration is open for the PUPC Ladies Day Luncheon. You can register on our church app or with Sister Angie or Sister Gretchen. The cost is $25 and is due at the time of the registration. The last day to sign up is Sunday, April 14th. Any questions, please see Sister McFarland. Girls for God is Sunday, April 28th, following the service down at the Family Center. There's a pizza and pickleball tournament. Please let Sister McFarland know if you will be going to that. Let's remember our Save Our Children offering that we are in the middle of, of collecting. Thank you to those that have already given. This is a great offering that we take up every year that, that blesses our children, our youth camps, Bible quizzing, and on and on. So thank you for giving. That I, we, uh, Brother Brent will be sending that offering um, the middle of May. So let's get that in as quickly as we can. And then also just want to keep in front of you our building fund uh, that, that we're doing. I thank God for what he's doing and this, the different plans and the projects that we have. We were already able to buy a, um, a baptistry and uh, uh, some microphones and different things already. And... God is doing great things. We have some, some more ideas uh, coming up, but thank you for giving to that. God is going to bless you, and He already has. He already has. And then uh, finally, our, our uh, young people, youth and parents, there's a youth rally this Friday, the 12th. Please meet at the church at 5.45 p.m. Please let Sister Jerrica know it is sneaker and suit night, so wear your best sneakers. God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for receiving the word. Let God continue to speak to you and let God lead you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Andrea, it's so good to have you tonight. Amen. So thankful that you're here with Brother Chris. Amen. So thankful for what God is doing. Amen. God bless you. Greet one another. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.